I know that over the years we've talked about some pretty bad attendees of the Republican National Convention, but honestly, I think Amber Rose is pretty high up there. It's kind of shocking when you think that they had a porn star and leader of the slut walk as a speaker there, and therefore as some kind of representative, I guess, of uh, idealized republicanism, which is kind of interesting. I mean, we always talk about how those on the right are, are slipping leftward each year. At least the Republican Party is constantly slipping leftward. And I think this is, I mean, it has to be a huge example of that. Uh, but there are a lot of different self-proclaimed conservatives and Republicans who are claiming that we just need to be more inclusive. We just need to have the bigger tent for more people. And I think that's just incredibly short-sighted. So that's why I just wanted to go ahead and do this video because, I mean, firstly, you have to decide what is a Republican, or in some cases they're saying that they're welcome under the Trump camp or the MAGA tent or whatever phrase you want to, you know, use. But what is that? Like, if you can't define a set of values that you're representing, you know, with that, then what really are you doing unless you're just, you know, a sycophant of Trump, if that's your entire thing, but you also do you care what he believes? Do you care what his values are? At what point do you say, you know what, we're not okay with that? If you don't have that, then uh, you're not really doing anything. It's almost like you're just, I don't know, going to like a, a music show or something in, in, in equivalence. You know, you're just going there to shout and scream and, and support your guy, but there's no actual value system associated with it at all. Uh, maybe that is the case for some people, but I don't think it makes sense as a political strategy. Like, let's, let's just have more people in this tent that we can't define, so we're going to change the country in a way that, I don't know. Because if you don't actually have a value system, then how are you going to change the country in a positive direction that's actually antithetical, really? And then there are those who claim that, well, Amber Rose converted, and therefore you should just quit being such a hater. And uh, firstly, I, I don't think she converted in any way in terms of values. According to her speech, she basically learned that Trump isn't racist and she thought that he was, and therefore now he's he's not he's not a bad guy anymore. That's not a conversion, it's just you didn't understand something before and now you do. But like, for example, she still has her OnlyFans page. In fact, apparently there's a 50% off discount now if you want to go look at her pornography. Um, because she appeared at the RNC, and so therefore it's a it's a way of of promoting that. That's not a conversion. If you also want to look at just in terms of time frame, so you remember when she was praising the Satanic Temple for what was it helping a lot of people by making sure people had access to abortions? Not. No, I'm a full, I'm an atheist for sure. Not a Satanist. I'm not a Satanist. No. And there is a distinction. Satanists are just, uh, they're atheists as well, but they're just more political. Okay. They're, they they have like a, it's actually a, a very rational, logical religion. They they help a lot of people, a lot, um, to a lot of women to get abortions. You know when that was? March. March of 2024. Yeah. That's how recently it was. So even if you believe in an authentic conversion to whatever, whether you think it's Trumpism or Republicanism or what have you, even if you believe that, do you really think there's wisdom in putting someone on stage who has converted in that amount of time and then lauding them as someone capable of representing the viewpoints of that? Um, I, I don't think so. I don't think that makes any sense at all. I mean, because you have to look at, well, what is what is conservatism? What are you conserving? Because we used to have an understanding that we were conserving the traditional values um, that, that frankly just at least made America. We at least had that sort of like, you know, I guess central thesis, if you like. We had an understanding of natural law upon which the Bill of Rights was based, right? These are the things that, that we would look at. We would look at Christian values because that's what traditional values actually are. But you're no longer seeing any of that. And so what you actually have is a sense of relativism, which is also what you see in the left, a constant moral relativism where everything just kind of is, is okay and, and gets more okay with time because our morals and our values just kind of get in the way of the fact that we like these specific people. 
like you see with Amber Rose. Well, we just kind of, we like her because she says the things that we want to hear. So therefore we have this moral ambiguity and who cares? Um, there was one post I saw online earlier that said, well, do you want to win elections or not? And that's a, it's an interesting perspective because A, I think it's just kind of weird that you would think that uh, at a point where you have uh, Trump running against this person who's senile and who just survived an assassination attempt, that the one thing that would push it over the edge would be having a porn star at the RNC. That's kind of weird. But also the whole winning elections on the basis of diluting every value that you hold, I'm not sure that, that actually makes sense. Because if, if you were trying to do that, if your entire um, stance was, well, if we just abandon all of our central values in order to get into the White House, because then we'll have more people voting, but then what are you going to do when you get there? Is there anything that you're going to actually accomplish? What are you trying to achieve that wouldn't exclude some people? And if your fear, if your central fear is excluding some people, then you don't have any standards at all. You just have a complete indifference to evil. Um, which is what liberalism always was. Um, but, but that's what you're actually doing. And I think that you have to at least be honest about the fact that, I don't know, you're just a supporter of, of a man, of, of, a, of a movement that doesn't actually have any sort of um, value system at all. Some of the, uh, I guess, more prominent, because Twitter exists, uh, commentators have also sort of jumped on this in favor of Amber Rose. And so I just want to look at, look at least one of those. So you got here, it says, Amber Rose and all her followers are 100% welcome in the MAGA movement. So is anyone who wants to make America great again. And by the way, her speech was fantastic. When people see the light and change, you welcome them with open arms. These egomaniacs who think they're the judge and jury of conservatism, and they, and they alone, from high on their moral soapbox, get to anoint who gets in the movement according to their own purity test, are a laughable joke. See, the thing is that he just can't seem to define what the MAGA movement is in terms of values at all. And so that's the trouble. It's like, it's not that my value system and his value system are different, it's that he doesn't seem to have one. Instead, it's just, it's just the more people, the better. It's the movement. And you know what movement is kind of similar to? It's similar to the word progressive, right? Because it's just, it's progress. In, in what direction? Where are we going? The fact that we're moving is not actually a good in itself unless we're going towards a positive net end. And if, you're, if your movement is just simply, we need a bigger tide towards nothingness, that's, that's actually not something that we want, right? That's actually not a good. Uh, and it's kind of difficult to explain that to some of these people who just get so wrapped up in the politics of it, in, I guess you could say, the winning of it, that they can no longer see straight. But sacrificing everything that you believe for a victory that will then be impotent is not a, a good strategy. It's one that, frankly, the Republican Party has been following for the past few decades, and that's why it's been going further and further to the left over time and, and dragging the Overton window with it. But that's not a strategy for the future. It's not something that we want. So, you know, it's kind of like, yes, if people like Amber Rose want to join the movement, if, and if the movement was actual conservatism with a value system, then she would have to reject those things that, you know, are indecent and bad for her as an individual, bad for the people around her, bad for society as a whole, you know, and then come and, and join and argue against those things. And that's fine. But it, even in, in that case, you wouldn't say, okay, so you've had this conversion, well, you know, a month later, let's go ahead and put you on stage, because that's always gone pretty badly for for Republicans, I will say that. It doesn't usually work out well in the long term, because why would it? Uh, this is just a terrible strategy from top to bottom. So the people who think that we should simply widen the tent, that's what Republicanism has been doing for decades. It isn't working. It's time to actually, if you want to have a, if you want to move in a positive direction as a country, you have to recognize the values that actually built it, the good ones, right? And herald those and strengthen those and work against the relativism that's destroying the country. And that <laughs> that isn't by embracing that relativ relativism to embrace people like Amber Rose while she's still rolling in the degeneracy that's undermining our society. 
hey, you're still here. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much.